Hello everyone, it's DJ, and welcome to another episode of RC Retirement. Today we're going to go to the last segment of our Q&A with our USAR officer, Heather. I say our, our officer, well, she's not our officer, but you know, she was uh, asking us a lot of good questions. Uh, I say us, meaning me and my uh, medical consultant, Misty. Today, it's actually not going to be Heather. It's going to be her husband, Dan. This segment is all her husband. Uh, she is, like I said in the last segment, she is taking care of the kids in this segment. So you won't see any of Heather in this segment. It'll just be Dan. He has some good questions and some good comments. So it'll all be Dan. And then you'll have myself and Misty responding to, to Dan's comments and questions. And then you'll have me back at the end. So let's dive right into the Q&A with Dan. And I'll see you in a moment. My wife just took over for the kids, so I don't really have any. I was just chatting away because it was nice to talk to y'all. Yeah. I did all the research. I found you, and my wife is really good at her job, but I'm the nerd. I'm the one that reads the court opinions. I just, I'm the one that likes research. So I was doing this, and uh, I've just learned that be over prepared if you're going to go through a board because it's scary. Because my wife had literally been in 18 years of summer in the reserves and about 15 years active. And we had a plan that she was going to retire at 42. And when she put in her profile, she really just put it in because, Hey, these things are not good for my health and not good for the army. And then no one really thought about the deployer get out. Yeah. And then on top of that, she had all the headaches. She never technically was diagnosed with chronic migraine. So this has all been a blessing, but it's also been a little scary because we had a plan and she was going to retire and now we're looking at it saying, okay, even if she retired, she's going to have these health conditions. So we want to make sure we take care of her and put her health first. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, uh, although I suppose you'll probably read it or hear it in the, the recording. Um, at, one of the things that, that really struck me as I was doing some of the research and uh, uh, when looking through her case, was how much of a major service related problem migraines are turning out to be like something like 75 percent of soldiers who didn't have migraines previously come home from iraq with uh at least one confirmed migraine so there's this is really it's, it's a much bigger thing on a public health level than they're letting on so when she went to Iraq, we would just been married. That was 15, 16 years ago. And she didn't have any of the science issues either. I don't, I have no clue. No, I could totally, totally there's, think that there's a, a bigger respiratory, or a, a bigger connection there. Again, with the, uh, we were talking about Iraq dust, which is composed of little tiny daggers and depleted uranium. <laughs> Not great. So, no. uh, yeah. And well, the other thing is, is then, so I'm such a nerd that I went in and saw the VA and how they rate it. And then I was really afraid that they were going to rate her just on her nasals and say the migraines was that in only one condition. So, and we thought it was together too, but then we went to specialists, they said, no, you can have both. And unfortunately, yeah. based on your records, you have chronic migraines and you have chronic sinitis with nasal polyps. And, and they so, make each other worse. They do. And so the problem we had is, I've read too many horror stories and I know a lot of these people because they didn't have the medical stuff or they didn't, they didn't do all these things. But my thing is, is, is not to try to get over on the service, but to make sure that when she goes through all this, that it's properly rated that she's unfit migraines, unfit chronic sinitis with nasal polyps. And both of her ratings are supposed to be 50% based on, she's got a headache diary. She's got, you know, she should, Minimum be fifty percent on the cyanitis and thirty percent on the on the migraines, and I really think it's fifty. But the other thing was that's VA ratings. Now the PEB is how can you do your job? So what we started doing, I wrote up all the memos, and then she did her BC side them. So now she has memos saying I recommend that uh, I you know basically the subject memorandum for record basically saying that she's unfit that 
uh, believes she's unfit and that she can't do this, this, and this because of her condition. She's got three separate memos. Um, and the problem is every single one of those things, both conditions make her disqualifying. So yeah. in there it says um, she can't go to the range for chronic cyanitis because of allergies and this, this, and this. She can't go to the range because of her migraines because of this, this, and this. And so I'm just trying to get everything there because I I went through a med board a long time ago and the PEB was opposite of the med board. Like it didn't, I didn't care. I was, it didn't matter to me because it was like the difference between zero and 10%. But with her retirement on the line, I want to make sure she's properly, properly done. And, and also um, like DJ, you went through a formal PEB you said in that email. So obviously you disagreed with something or else you would have appealed, right? So they're, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make it so that when we go through this process, it makes it really hard for them to come to a different conclusion than, than what the VA says. And, I'm, and because all our conditions that are unfitting are also the ones that are causing their problems, I wanna make sure that the PEB results come out the same way because the whole time during the last few years, she's put the army ahead of her health and really deteriorated because of the fact that I'm the one that suffered. She would come, she would, she would work and then come and go to bed and, and be useless for the day and the weekends. And, and so I felt like I was a caretaker and not a husband. So I've been really pushing her to take care of yourself, document everything and make sure it's not only accurate for the VA, but that the DOD properly rates it. So we're thinking with all these memorandums for records saying she can't do the field, she can't do the range, she can't do all these things that she'll be rated closely to what the VA says. I don't know if that'll happen, but DJ, are we on the right track here for making sure we're, we're doing it properly? You've got a good start. And uh, you know, if the, uh, and, and actually since it's the VA that's going to evaluate her first and the DOD is going to accept you know, the ratings that are given for whatever condition, if they accept it as a disabling condition at all, then you're fine. So, so you, you, yours was, was your, uh, was your formal again, because of the migraines or was it due to something else? It was because of the migraines. So what did they rate it and what did you think you deserved to be rated? I, uh, it, the formal was to get the migraines counted at all. Oh, really? Okay. And after getting them accepted as a disabling condition, I then had to go back to the VA and get them to assign a rating to the migraines. So they didn't have a rating at all. Right. It, didn't, I had, it was a two-step process. I had to first get the PEB to accept the migraines as a disabling condition. And then the since the VA had not given them a rating, I had to go back to the VA and get them to give it a rating. And the VA gave it a 50% rating, the highest they can give. Yeah, and that, that is. I, I've been really worried about the chronic cyanitis. Become, but it also says it, to get 50% rating for chronic cyanitis if you have more than six or eight sinus infections a year, which she also has. So my greatest fear is because they both play off each other and get each other worse. In my opinion, this compounding should make it a higher rating. They can't do that. I'm just afraid they're going to lump it all and say 50% chronic cyanitis and totally uh, not say that it's, a, a sec, uh, it's its own issue with migraine. They might say one is secondary to the other, but it would st it should still be a, a, a another condition that's unfitting. So yeah, but I don't know if it is secondary because their doctor said that it it was separate. Like they're they're combined, but you can have chronic cyanitis and chronic migraines, and they can be two separate diagnosed conditions. Yep, because the migraines happen in your brain, not your sinuses. Right. Exactly. I mean, when it's like if you had chronic sinusitis and epilepsy. There's actually a connection between your sinuses and brain that they might trigger each other, but they're two completely different sy systems that it's just the fact that they happen to talk to each other once in a while. It's like your yeah. microwave and your TV. They're, they're completely different things, but if you put your microwave next to your TV, it will like do little squiggly lines and interact with your TV and make it malfunction. It's just that, you know, because they happen to be next to each other. It's not because one, they're doing anything the same. 
and that's why we want to get some outside help and we don't mind paying a little bit of money because we want to we want to have out like we want to have the primary doctor the specialist and a third party because um you know i i have i got through the va and i got the percentages i've always thought of that were right in line but i did it because i made it so it was very hard for someone to come to a different conclusion because you had the doctors all saying the same things and you had the medical records and, and really the, the exams I think are kind of silly for at least for her conditions because really all her medical records speak for herself but she just says the same things that are in her medical records and um, it'll basically try to avoid a formal I mean it's already stressful enough trying to go through this and have a pandemic um, and, and her new BC might not let her go all the way till she hits 12 months of profile. She's got to talk to him because he just took over last week. I have a feeling it's in their best benefit because she's the S3OIC to let her go all the way through because um, honestly, they don't, other than hurting their numbers for the range or some of these other things, she's way more valuable since most nights yeah. of her duties are office related. And if she has a migraine or has something, she can work later in the night or the next day. So she's not really hurting anyone, even when she has to miss work. Um, the other thing, since you're, you're the one who's the de very detail oriented here, mm -hmm. um, thinking about other things that are related to these conditions and come with common exposures, we want to make sure that if she has any degree of tinnitus or hearing loss that that's brought up or mm -hmm. also her sense of smell because she has no smell she can't smell anything so anosmia which is the technical term for a lack of sense of smell is mm -hmm. actually a va recognized service related injury for um both iraq and afghanistan so knowing those things knowing those things now we should be pu putting those in and making sure that's part of the documentation and all these little things that go with it that are contributory um making sure that we we have you know we we make sure this adds up to 150 percent as opposed to the 100 percent we're looking for the thing is is i never care so much about the va because if things change at least the va can change it i get really worried about the dod because i told my oh. wife i was like you don't, have to tell them that if one, because don't think that way though, because VA ratings get moved over into the DOD disability column when you're going through IDES. No, no, I, I know for this process, I was just pointing out if it was just VA alone, it's okay. not as big of a deal because it changes. But through this process, you're right. Um, the reason for it is, is you could go through this whole process and be rated, let's say 30%. In her case, she'd already earned 40 because your longevity would be higher at 40. But you know, DOD doesn't change. So if you get rated 30 and then later down the road you get worse, you might get your VA increase, but you're done. You're stuck at PDRL at that 30 or 40%. So right. I want to make sure she's properly rated at 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever that proper is, so that she doesn't you know, get worse down the road and, and she didn't get the proper uh, medical retirement that she deserves. Yeah, and, and we want to get her as close to uh, – technically uh 80 percent as we can because 75 percent on the dod side is the maximum uh, disability uh, pay rate that uh, we can get for her and i mean i i looked at it and said she no va because it's 50 and then 50 percent of 50 is no i mean i know that's really 80 percent so where two conditions right. the most you could have is 80 right 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 that's and that's fine she should be rated 80 for those two. She's got a few other things, but she's relatively healthy. I mean, she's got some plantar flesh specialitis or something in both feet. She's got inserts and she's got the lack of smell and I'm sure they'll find a few others. Um, but my worry was, is that they'll, they'll let's, let's say they do 80% VA. Too. And what? Let's not count on just those two though. And what did you well, Exactly. So we yeah. don't want to go through all that. Um, but my worry was just even those two, they should be rated identical DOD because they really are affecting her job. Like, it's not like, oh, she has these problems, but they don't affect her job. And they really do. But you know, if she was willing to apply for a co-ed packet, um, you know, would you want to stay in Minnesota or would you go back to Michigan? I think if she could do Michigan or Minnesota, she would look, she'd do it. The worry is that they're going to move us one more time away from family 
and towards the very end of her career. And she's thinking, if I'm going to get a 50%, remember, she'll have a rating already. She, she goes, you know what, I'm already 50%. Uh, so basically, even though she might have a slightly higher retirement, it's not that much because she's an EO3. So getting to major with a 36-month average and an EO3 with 36-month average isn't too much of a difference. It's a few hundred bucks a month. So for her right now, she's thinking, you know what? I would rather just medically retire and my kids are still young and, and I've never lived, we, she joined the military at 17, that's all she's ever known. And it would be just kind of nice to move on to that next stage in her life. However, we do co-ad and she could stay here, it's a possibility, especially since she'd have an over 50% rating and then she could get that extra add-on. I don't remember the name of it anymore. Not C, uh, CRC, not CRCF, sir. I don't remember which one it is. CRDP. CRDP, yes. So she could do CRDP. So there is some incentives there, but I mean, that's the nice thing. The co-ad packet goes in and I, where they put it in the process is a great place because you have a good picture of where you'll be if you don't apply for it. You already, and you already know it's kind of a long shot, but you can look at co-ad and go, um, you know, this would really help me. And I think I can do my job for the army really well. And and she, everyone has glowing reviews of Heather. She's great, and she'll work whenever she needs to work. She's a get the job done. But that's been her downfall. Her health has really took a dive because she's always put work first. And my fear, too, is that she has a heart. I have to yell at her because she has migraines, and she won't come home, and she won't rest. And you That know. sounds really familiar, David. <laughs> So I just want to, I just want her to take care of herself because uh, you know how she's going to take care of the rest of her family when she's not even taking care of her own health. Yeah, and and she deserves to have some quality of life too. Rather over prepare and have this go through smoothly because I've read a lot of these nightmares and I know that some of the people they didn't prepare. They're, maybe they weren't the best soldier, but my wife is a go-getter. She's a really good soldier. The, everyone in her unit says, I can't believe the Army's going to kick you out because she's sacrificed to make sure yeah. that she did a great job. And I'm just ready for her to take care of her health. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have anything else. I just wanted to chat since you guys spoke, and uh, I'm really grateful for your help, and I'm grateful for this video because I think you're going to help a lot of other people when they get to do it. So, so there we are with Dan's comments and, and, and his uh, thoughts on how IDES goes and of course my thoughts and Misty's thoughts uh, accordingly. Uh, it was a, a very good uh, Q&A overall, I thought, and, and the last uh, six segments, you know, this one included, I thought were full of great information for all of you and I think this was a very worthwhile project to take on. I would love to do things like this with other service members in the future and I think you can look forward to more like this in the future. I would love to hear your comments about this actually whether you thought this was worthwhile. I've seen Dan's comments of course saying great content I'd like to hear your comments as well. So what did you think? Is this worthwhile material? Should there be more like this or not? You know, I certainly thought it was worthwhile and there should be more like this, not just on medical retirements, but other topics. So what do you think? You know, what other types of content should there be? And you know, sh what other types of interviews or you know, should, should it be interview type content or just what should there be? You know, you know, feedback is always a good thing. So let me know what your thoughts are. You know, and of course, you know, come on over here and hit that subscribe button regardless of what your thoughts on this particular video are because there's lots of good content on this channel. So of course, subscribe and spread the word about this channel. Let people know what's out here and you know, how they can fill their brains with useful information. All right, so like I said, there's gonna be a whole lot more of stuff like this coming, at least 
you know, I'm going to try to have stuff like this coming in the future. I've got a couple of other things lined up. And if you would like to support my efforts for things like this and others in the future, then feel free to go on over to patreon.com slash rcretirement and subscribe for monthly contributions of whatever suits you best. That's monthly, not per episode. And you can help me uh, support myself since this is my full-time profession. And I can also support you by helping you out with uh, uh, personnel support. Go to rcretirement.com and look at the uh, fees for services page and you can see the full range of services that I can provide for you, be it uh, applying for retired pay or for combat related special compensation or a whole range of other benefits that you may be eligible to get but not know how to do yourself, I can help you do that. So just take a look there and then contact me. If you, if you have questions about that or just comments in general, you can email me at dj at rcretirement.com and I will respond to you post haste. So that's all I've got for today's episode. Thank you for spending your time with me. I do appreciate that as always. So come back again for another episode and spend some more time with me. As always, thank you for being here and thank you for your service. Have a great day. If you liked what you heard on today's episode, then please go below and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then please have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RC Retirement website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for entertainment and informational purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel, accountant, or financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.